The sociable lapwing is confined to the steppes of Central Asia and almost we think about 95% of all the world's sociable lapwings breed in Kazakhstan, uh, which is where we've been studying this species for the last six years. The central steppes of Asia are unspeakably vast, they just go on, you can drive for days and days and days across this landscape and see very little change. What sociable lapwings require is very, very closely cropped sward. They, they're like, essentially like, they're, they're like nesting on a billiard table. And the reason for this, like our own lapwing, is that they have to have a good view of predators all around them. The sociable lapwing is one of around 200 species listed as critically endangered. That means that this is the group of species across the world which are in greatest at greatest risk of extinction. It's a migratory bird and we were very keen to find out more about where these birds move to. Uh, the problems don't appear to be uh, on the breeding grounds, so we're therefore assuming that the problems are on the migratory routes or on the wintering grounds. Now we were faced with a slight problem, which is that when these birds leave Kazakhstan we have very, very little idea where they actually go to. So what we've been doing is we've been fitting birds with the latest satellite technology. These are tiny little tags, just five grams in weight that we attach to the back of the birds when they're on the breeding grounds and that allows us to track their movements throughout the year. So the birds breed on the steppe areas of central Kazakhstan and then in the autumn they start to move west, almost due west, uh, which takes them around the north side of the Caspian Sea and then they head due south through the Caucasus region of Russia into the Middle East where they, they stage for a while and then due south again, the majority of them we think winter in the desert regions of southern Sudan. Uh, in fact, there have been no visual records of this species from Africa for many, many years, but we've tracked them there. Uh, our colleagues in the Sudan Wildlife Foundation went out, we sent them the location, and they actually found our radio tagged birds. So we now have a, a much better idea about where these birds are going in the winter. I think this is a fantastic example of international collaboration uh, through the BirdLife Partnership. And having worked together with all these partners to work out what the problems are, we're now working with them to develop solutions to those problems.